Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and this is a assembler 4 tutorial for creating a scissor lift. Now I'm using FreeCAD 0.19 but this will work in 0.19 and above and what we're doing is creating this model and this animation and we're going to show you a few problems around topological naming issues and how to resolve those and actually how to create the arms, the skeleton and the animation all in one sitting. Okay, so let's give it a go. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create the arm for the scissor lift. So I'm going to start a new document or a new scene and I'm going to go into the part design and in here I'm going to create a new part because we're going to be using it in an assembly. So that would have made a new part, so it's a part there and we're going to create a body and create a sketch. I'm going to place it along the XY plane and OK that. And this is going to be a simple arm in a kind of Meccano type style. So we're going to use the slot in the sketch and I'm going to create that in here. And we're going to put some constraints on here. So I'm going to place a symmetrical constraint between this point, this point and use the center point to place that symmetrical to the center. Create, create, create symmetrical constraint in there. Places that there. We also need a length constraint. Now I'm going to constrain this to about 100 millimeters, but the length is up to you. Also that's got to reflect in the skeleton that we're going to build. And I'm going to put some height in here as well. So about 15 millimeters. And I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna create a circle. Now I've got the auto constraints on, so when I hover over the center line at that center point, you can see this can constrain a point on point constraint in there. I'm just gonna create the circle in here. Hit escape, and I'm gonna put a diameter on there. So come up to here and constrain the diameter and 10 will do us, so 10 on there. And what I'm going to do is just zoom out. I'm gonna copy that circle in there. Hit Control C, and now I constrain this to somewhere else. And this will make a copy of that circle. And I'm just gonna hover over that point, place it there. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side as well. So I'm gonna just move over to the other side and take that, hit control C and do the same and use the auto constraint and constrain it to there. Next I'm going to close and I'm going to add some padding to that. There's 10 mm padding so I'm going to put something like 5 mil in there. And that will basically do us for that arm. So I'm going to OK that. So I'm going to save that now. Hit Control S or come up to File, Save. And I'm going to create a new folder in here. Put it Scissor Lift. Scissor Lift Assembly. Jump in there. I'm going to call this Arm. That's it, that was painless. That's our arm done. And that's all we're going to use for the scissor lift arm. You can be more complex if you like, but this is just a simple tutorial to put you in a place where you can refine the model. But for the time, we're just going to use this, and that's more than enough. So we'll move on to the assembly next. For the assembly, we're going to close down the arm, and we're going to create a new scene again, or a new document. And this time I'm going to go over to the assembler 4. If you haven't got this, then if you come up to 
Tools, Add-on Manager, and you'll find the Assembler 4 down here. And it's well worth updating this if you haven't done for a while, because there's new updates coming out every now and again, and we can install updates if we so desire. So it's already up to date. So let's close that. So the first thing we do with assembly is create a model. Now we can use the little icon on the toolbar, create a new assembly model, or go up to assembly and new model. And if you click on the model tab, that will have created it there. So we've got the parts and the model. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create the skeleton for this. Now our parts were 100 millimeters long, so each of the arms of the skeleton require to be 100 millimeters. Now there's a few gotchas around here where we're going to be looking out for topological naming issues, and we'll do something to get around those. So what I'm going to do is come over to the parts, and I'm going to create a new part in here. And this is going to be the skeleton that drives this assembly. Create a new part. I'm going to call this skeleton part. So in parts, I've got skeleton part now. And in here, I'm going to create a new sketch. And this is going to be the skeleton. So I'm just going to call it skeleton sketch. At the moment, we don't have to worry about attachments. So that's fine. So let's OK that. And now we can go into the skeleton, find the sketch, and double click on it. And that will open the sketcher where we can actually start sketching. First thing I'm going to sketch is a single arm. Now this will be controlling the scissor, so we're going to have to connect arms together in the center. If you think about a scissor, and it's connecting in the center, and that's what this sketch is going to be. But we're going to do this a different way to stop this topological issues happening. What I need to do is create a line, like so, and attach a point to this line. So I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to use the point. Now there is a reason for this. What I'm going to do is place the point on the line, and I'll make that point the center point. So I'm going to create both these points, and I want that point to be dead in the center of those two. So we click that last point last, and then we use the symmetrical constraint. That places that in the center. So we can place a length along here of 100. You remember back to our arm, it was 100 between the two holes at each end, 100 millimeters. And that's created our first arm and we'll duplicate this and connect it to this point in the middle. Now, why didn't we just click on the polygon and use this, and then created a equality constraint against those, and a parallel constraint against those, and then put the length of just say one of these to 50 millimeters. Well, again, this will cause a bit of an issue when we get to the topological naming problems. If you haven't come across that, that's when FreeCAD basically optimizes your model and renames parts of your model when you exit a sketch or exit a pad. And what happens is if you've got something connected to it, it will get dissociated with it. FreeCAD has a tendency to do that when you've edited something further down the chain. And this also happens in sketches. Now the reason why I've used a center point here rather than this type of approach is because these are actually two individual lines. And there's a chance that these lines will become renamed. So the arm if attached to here may swap to here or it may swap back depending on what kind of name happens in FreeCAD. So this is the reason why I've used a single line. Because there's no way to rename this. This is one single line. It hasn't got anything attached to it, so there's no optimization done with renaming. It's a single line with a name. And when you attach something to it, you're attaching it via a point on object constraint, which means it doesn't become part 
of the linked lines that are connected to this. Though it's linked, it's connected by a different kind of connection. If you're doing point on point constraints, then they'll be linked. They'll be part of the linked list. So for instance, if I place a line here and connected it to that point there, like so, those two lines in FreeCAD, when it lists them, are not really linked. Then they, they are connected via this constraint and it moves with them, they're not really linked. If it's connected to the end, so if I take that line and connect it to that end, that is linked. So the topological naming problem will happen there because the name will be passed from here to here or swap back depending on what type of renaming happens. That's one thing to look out for and that's why I've taken this approach. And there'll be other approaches we'll be doing in this to stop this issue. So this is one arm. Now we want to make a scissor, so I'm going to copy this arm. Hit Control C. And I'll just place it down. And I'm going to move it so it crosses. And I'm going to place a point on point constraint on those two. Like so. So they are connected now. And that's a point on point constraint on the actual points. So it's not part of the line. Because if we sever that sym symmetrical constraint in there, then these lines will become basically they will slide up and down so they're not actually connected. But the sym symmetry constraint allows that to be connected like so, so that it scissors. But there's still two individual lines that we shouldn't have any problems with. Now that's done, I can constrain this middle point to this line here. And that is going to be a fixed point on the object line. So that allows that to move up and down that line. I'm also going to do that with this point because now that's moving up and down the line. We've got freedom of movement down here. I don't want that. So I'm going to use that point and this line and do the same. So point on object constraint and do the same here. That line and fix the point onto the object constraint. Now we've got a single scissor, like so. And what we now do is actually duplicate this up and connect them together, but we're going to be wary of our connections. And what I think I'm going to do is get the arms onto this and hook up the LCS system so we know what's happening. So that's close. That's enough for our skeleton for the time being. You can see our skeleton is sitting there. And what I'm going to do is place a local coordinate system on these lines. Now, if you don't know what a local coordinate system is, it's also abbreviated to LCS. Well, for instance, this is an LCS there. It comes, when you create a part, it automatically comes with an LCS there. So what that LCS will do is because it's a default one there, that will attach to the assembly, the, the main assembly, and then we'll place an LCS on each of these lines. And that will orientate any parts we add to this, i.e. our arm, in the direction of these lines. All this is is an XYZ coordinate system that's aligned with any of these lines. And it's very easy to attach these. And once they're attached, you can understand how they work. And what we'll do, we'll attach the LCSs to this line and this line, and then we'll start attaching the parts. Before I do that, I'm gonna save my assembly. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when we start importing parts or adding LCSs, then we must save the assembly first. Otherwise you can get something called a, a link rather than a actual part that's imported. 
and we can get some problems around there. So it's, it's best to save that first before proceeding. Now we've saved, let's add the LCS to those arms. So we take the skeleton sketch here. We need to click on the part. This is where we add the LCS to. We mustn't add it to anything below this sketch. So if we had, say, a body in here, then we mustn't add it inside the body. It must sit just below the part. To add LCS system, we've got an icon here. Create data object. We can drop that down and see there's a new coordinate system there. Or we can go up to the assembly and come down to new coordinate system. This is create a new LCS. And I'm going to call this arm1 because I'm going to attach arm1 to this LCS. Arm1 underscore LCS. We get an attachment window come up that we need to select something in our sketch. Now, our selecting is showing that we need to select something. If this isn't selected, selecting like this, just click it. And what I'm going to do is place in arm1. Now, I know the bottom of my sketch is in line with this LCS system here. So I know this is the bottom. So this gives me a bit of reference to where we are. So I'm just going to click on that line there and now I've got to use the attachment mode to actually align it on there now Z tangent to the edge you can see it will place it right on the edge and the blue is the Z axis red is the X and the green is the Y so the Z is in line with that but I want inertial CS which places it in the middle which is exactly where I want it. So you can see, if I move it, you can see the z-axis is flashing there. So there's the z-axis. If I scroll in, zoom in, then that will actually shrink, but you can get an idea of whereabouts it is by just zooming out and just moving this up and down to see where it is. And that's exactly where I want it. So okay that. So what will happen when I add my arm, that will attach to it. Now I'm going to place arm two along this one as well. So we've got it attached to one, but obviously when we put in another arm, we need to attach it to this one. So that's our first LCS in there and we can click on the LCS and we can see the attachment, how it's mapped, etc., etc. And if we want to change the mapping, we can come in here, click on the icon on the end and change that mapping. But I'm happy with where it is. Now we're going to add arm 2 in. And we're going to do exactly the same. Click the skeleton part to make sure it actually goes into the part and nowhere else. And using the drop down for the new coordinate system or the menu item, I'm going to call this arm 2 underscore LCS. And again, we've got the selection mode. So remember which one we select. First we select to the left, now we need to select the right. And inertial CS for the center, and you can see where the Z axis has been aligned to. And okay that. And that's everything we need for just that one scissor of that sketch. I'm gonna save that. And what I'm going to do is jump over to my arm now because I'm gonna need that open so I can actually import it into the model because we import it by clicking on the model and clicking the insert and link to a part and the only thing that's there at the moment is the skeleton part so I'm going to cancel out that and I'm going to go to file and it was a recent file so I can come down to here and recent file is the arm and that will open it down here you can see the arms imported in so now that will be available to actually import in the assembly and if I click the insert a part you can see the arm part is there but we're not going to insert it just yet we need to do something on the arm to allow it to be inserted and that's also add a local coordinate system to the arm so we've got our arm in front of us we need to add a local coordinate system to it so we can align it onto our lines in our sketch now if you think about it what's actually happening is we attach an LCS to an LCS, so an LCS of the skeleton will have an arm attached to it via the same LCS and they connect together. So I'll be connecting this arm 
in the center of this arm and aligning it with one of these lines. So to do that, I need to be in the assembly of four again. I need to click on the part of the arm and it's the same process. So I come in here, new coordinate system or up to assembly, new coordinate system. And we give it a name. So I'm going to call it arm LCS. Yeah, okay. And now it's asking me where to place it. Now I've got a number of options. I could come out to the model and select the body like so. Come back so the body so it's in solid, solid there as body is selected and use the inertial CS there. And that's placed that in the center like so. I could also, instead of selecting the body, I could come in here and select this face inside here. And that will place it in the center using the inertial CS as well. I could even select this circle edge like so. Use the concentric and that will place it up against there. And if I wanted it in the center, I could come down and change the, if I look at the corner system, so that blue there is the Z axis, as you can see on here. Go down to the Z axis direction and change that and move that into the center. So it's five millimeters, so that'll be minus 2.5. There we go, so that's in there in the center. Now thinking of how this is going to be placed along that skeleton, I'm thinking that placing it in the center is a good idea. I could have the skeleton laying across here if I so desired. I think that's fine. And I'm actually going to go for that. So that's fine. That's okay that. So I've got it on the pad edge 21, which was that circle. And I'm going to OK that. So that's connected that up. So there's multiple ways you can connect that. I'm just going to save that and jump back to the assembly. Now we've got our arm open and available down with the tabs down here. We can import this into our assembly. But first we're going to import the skeleton. So I'm going to come up to the skeleton part. And I need to import this into our model. And the model as an LCS as well and that will be in the same position there so if I actually come in here and transform this out of the way like so and okay you see the LCS of the skeleton and the LCS of the model so I open up the skeleton there those two are two individual LCSs now the very first part you import into an assembly will be connected to this LCS origin, origin here. You can have multiples of these if you have multiple parts that you want to connect to the base of the model. But we've only got one skeleton in here so we only need to connect those two. So click on the skeleton and using the insert link to a part or you go out to assembly link apart and then we've got our name model there that should be our skeleton so you can see that our skeleton doesn't seem to be there but it's actually the unnamed model so we need to reopen our assembly to have that name come through and take effect so let's do that now now we re reopened it let's try to import that so let's click on the model and now you can see it's saying assembly skeleton part that's much better so we can see what we're doing now let's click on this the skeleton part insert and now you can see it's copied that model down so that was our original and that's our new and what we need to do is take the skeleton part and this LCS system here click on it so that LCS and we need to connect that to the parent assembly and there's an LCS system there so connect those two together and those are connected together there 
and we can use rotation if we so desire to change the rotation of it and I'm actually going to go for that so that's fine and okay so that's our skeleton in there but you can see that our other skeleton part in the part is still visible that's the best idea to click on that and press the spacebar and that makes that invisible so don't get these muddled up and this is the problem that you have with creating parts in the assembly you can create them as external files as we did the arm in that they can clutter up the assembly if we create them within here so that's our scissor sketch in there so that's our skeleton sketch part in there and we can come down to our skeleton here open this up and double click on the sketch and you can see our sketch is set in here and we can modify where the legs should go along that edge maybe easier to actually pull the top in there we go got more control over there close that you see our skeleton has moved but our LCS system has kept in line with these edges so let's add the arm to this so the same again click on the model and we need to attach the arm to one of these lines now I'm going to use this as a reference so this is the bottom of, of the skeleton let's bring this around and I'm going to use the insert a link part I'm going to click on the arm insert so an arm has been placed in there we use the arm LCS which is this point here this LCS here drop this down and now we want the skeleton the skeleton is just all of a sudden highlighted show that we're connecting it to the skeleton and now we pick an LCS system so at the moment it's sitting on LCS 01 click on the arm 1 you can see it's connected there but around the wrong way and LCS 2 you can see how they connect there so I want arm 1 and I want to rotate this so let's have a look of where this placed it so I want to rotate it around this red line which is our x-axis so if I come down here go rotate x now that's placed it in line with that skeleton that's exactly what we want okay that that's in there now now what this means if I change the skeleton let's pull one of these arms out slightly close that then this will follow and that's how the skeleton controls our model so let's place another arm in there now and to do that we go through the same process so we use the insert link part first clicking on the model insert link part or go up to the assembly link apart click on the arm insert so we're reusing the arm again click on the arm LCS drop this down to the skeleton and now we want arm 2 and it's probably going to rotate in the same direction which was X I believe or was it Y can't remember that yeah X the red so that's rotated around there and place that along there now we may want to offset that because it's going to intercept the other arm so we look at that and we look at where it's placed so we can see the blue there and the green and I want to move that along looks like the blue or could be the green so let's go for the green it doesn't matter because we can always bring that back let's bring that into the center so we can see what we're doing so I'm going to translate that along the Y and see where that goes so I just translate that and now let's offset that to that point there so it's not intersecting so it's offset by 5 remember we've padded by 5 so that's a 5mm offset along there so 
okay that and now we've got our first part of our scissor so I'm just going to click on one right click fit section that fixes the rotation of our scene and we can see there's one part of our skeleton there's the upper part of our skeleton sitting there so that's the two arms in there's the bottom if I double click on that skeleton and we'll move it like so close and you can see our arms move now we need to duplicate this up and do the same for a second set of arms at the top and this is where we may get into a problem with the topological naming issues but I can show you how to resolve that let's demonstrate this topological problem so we've got our assembly in front of us now watch what happens when I edit the skeleton I'm going to add another line in the skeleton now this line is going to be for another arm now I'm just going to add a line in here Normally what I'll do is duplicate this line, but for demonstration I'm just going to add a line. So I'm going to create a line that runs from that point, that's constrained from that point to that point. Hit close, look what's happened. This has jumped from here. So what's actually happened here? Well what's happened inside is that when we went into the sketch, we added that line. You can see this one's called edge one. This one's edge three. This one is edge two. Now look at where our arms are connected to. So I'm inside the part, I'm inside the skeleton, the original skeleton. Arm LCS is actually connected to edge one. And arm LCS two is connected to edge two. So why is it connected up here? Well, it's because the new line has been renamed. So we come down to our arm parts and I'm just going to hide those. So you can see that the LCS system has is actually connected to here. And it hasn't reconnected and what, what's actually happened is a new line has been created up here and has been renamed with edge 2, which this is connected to. And now this is edge 3. The process of actually connecting another line here has reconstructed our sketch and placed an edge 1, an edge 2, an edge 3, an edge 4. It's kind of optimized the layout because these are connected via point on point constraint. Now, to resolve that, it's quite easily done. Come into the skeleton sketch, let's just get rid of that line, and that's close. Now we're back to normal. You can see the LCS systems are sitting there and our arms are sitting on top of those systems. Now if I come into the sketch and this time place a line but instead of connecting it by point on point constraint on these two I'm going to use a different constraint. I'm going to use that point on this line and constrain it via fix a point onto an object. And I'm going to take these two points and add a distance of something really small like 0 0.25 millimeters. If I close that now, you see that line's been added and the LCS system and the arm haven't moved because there's been no renaming going on. That's because FreeCAD has not looked at this line and this line and found they're connected and has tried to optimize the sketch. Let's jump back in and remove that line because I don't need it. So this same process has to be done to the scissor. Now, I've got one scissor here and this scissor I just need to duplicate. So I've highlighted that scissor hit control C and you can see there's a line that goes to that center and that's the center of that scissor that point what I'm going to do is come over and just hover over 
that center line. And you can see we've got a constraint that's come up. A point on object constraint. I'm going to just click. And that's all to constrain it to there. Now they're not constrained here because if we do constrain them with our point on point constraint, we're going to have the same problem with the topological naming issues. I can demonstrate that. Close that. There we go. There's the problem. So let's go back into our skeleton. So I'm using the skeleton. It doesn't matter, actually matter which skeleton you use, but I'm using the skeleton in the original part. They have a link between each other, so any moments you do on one will appear on the other. But it's best to go to the other origin. Let's double click that and just hit Control Z and undo that. So remember what we were saying before, come in. And I'm going to move that point and just place it near that line. I'm going to use the point on the line and constrain it on a point on line constraint. And I'm going to take this point and this point and use a length constraint of something like 0.25 millimeters. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Bring the point down. So you can see it's the point of the new scissor that I've added. Click the point, click the line, and use the point on object constraint. And we don't need to constrain that length there because it's already been dealt with on the other side and all the other constraints mean, mean that if we try to do that it would be over constrained. So if I take this top and move it up and down you can see that's working. And we just duplicate this up each time that we need a new set of arms. Now the thing that I need to do is add the LCS system to these arms. So let's close out this see we're all good we haven't got any jumping of parts around and now we've got the skeleton sketch that has an extra set of arms and I'm going to add an extra set in so we want to do the same so come in here drop this down new coordinate system this is arm free LCS and at the moment, see it's disappeared, and that's because we've got this invisible. So we select the skeleton, hit spacebar to bring that back, and now we can see our skeleton. There we go. So it's this arm here that we're looking at. Let's go back to tasks, click on any because it's now selected because we've come out of there. Get rid of that and select this line here and do the inertial CS on that one so you can see that's got the blue line in line okay that and now we need to make a second arm don't worry about what it looks like at the moment it looks broken but we'll fix that in a moment and that's because we've got both the skeletons open and do you remember what I was saying about it becoming quite confusing when we have models with parts inside the model? Well, this is what's actually happening here. We've got a bit of confusion here. So I'm going to come down to the model and hide that. And that makes life a lot easier. So we've placed an LCS system on here. Let's place another LCS system. So remember selecting the part. Coming into new coordinate system. This is arm4 underscore LCS and select our edge inertial CS and that's in there. Okay that. So those are all in there ready to have arms connected to them. So I'm just going to show the model now and hide the skeleton part there. So you can see now we've got 
the LTS system sitting there and now we can actually bring in the arms so click on model and we can start attaching the arms to this model and again using the insert a link to a part arm part insert select the arm LCS drop this down to skeleton this time arm free rotate it along the axis which I believe was not Y Let's do that again Let's just bring that back long X that's in there okay that and one more part in there as well so let's go for assembly link apart just to be different click on the arm part insert arm LCS drop this down to the skeleton this time arm 4 rotate along the X and OK so that is our scissor lift basically done there so any amendments to either the skeleton here or the skeleton here will change that so click on that let's bring this down hit close and you can see our scissor lift is animated nicely to control this by a variable we need to place something else into our sketch so in our sketch I'm going to place a length between this point and this point here and that's just going to be a single constraint but first of all we need a variable and the reason being is that that constraint will be linked to the variable it's quite easy to do that so in model we've got variables you can see it's grayed out there if we come up to here we've got variables which we can add or to assembly add variable and now this has got to be a float because we're working in floats in this so 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 etc and I'm going to call this lift disk that'll do initial value is 10 so I'm going to make that about 50 okay so that's our variable sitting there now we jump into our skeleton and we're going to make that constraint so between these two points so this point and this point of the scissor we're going to place a length or distance constraint in there and now we're going to not put the length in there what we're going to use is this little icon here which is the formula icon so get the formula editor up and if we type V and we start seeing variables, let's place a dot in there. So if we start typing capital D, you can see that the D has appeared in there because there's D in there. If we hit capital L, then you've got a lift disk there. And the result is 50, which if you remember back, we set to 50. Okay, that, okay and that's set that to 50 it's gone orange so it's show it's referenced outside or externally constrained hit close and now our scissor lift has changed and we can animate that variable or include it into some python now we've added our variable we can actually come down the, to the variable in the variables in the model and we can change this variable to 20, 60, 70, 80, etc. And that will move the scissor lift up and down. And we can animate this as well. Just be careful if you go to 100 and then come back from that, you may find that this will break. And you just have to undo it. So just be careful if you go exceeding the min and the max of this. So I'll set this as something like zero. And then try to come back from that. You can see we've got some problems and things have started to break. So we've got a conflicting constraint in there and we need to remove the last one
and re-add it. So let's bring this back out. And you can see we've got some real problems going on here. So I'm just going to hit Control Z a couple of times and bring this back. There we go. Just watch out for that. So it's worth saving this before you do anything with that one. So that's all back to normal. So watch out when exceeding the minimums and maximums in there. So we can animate this now. Let's click on the animation. And I've already selected the lift dist in there, so we can select the variable, select lift dist, beginning range, and remembering we have to be careful with the min and the max. So 50 to 80, I'm going to use step to two, full through around every step, and run that. And this is a lift, we'll start running. Stop that now, close it. And that's how to build a simple scissor lift with the problems with topological name issues, resolving those, and building that in the assembly for. Hope that's helped. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.